running, is it good or bad for your weight and health? Well, that depends. This is one interesting video you don't want to miss. Let's go. Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about running for weight loss. Running! We love a good run. Walkies? No, I like to run. This is probably one of the most interesting videos you watch on running, marathons, heart rate and cardio. And no, it's not all good news. Let's just say you really don't want to miss this one, so keep watching. Let's start with the positives and then we'll get into some science and some of the things to be aware of. Running can be an amazing part of your lifestyle and your fitness. Done right, it can help you maintain better health. It's an easy tool for both fat breaking and fat burning if you know how to play with the intensity. And it can be wonderful for your mood and mental health. The best thing about running is that anyone can put on a pair of shoes or even go barefoot and go for a run. It takes no planning or prior experience, and you can start getting the benefits from day one. Running is the easiest way to build your aerobic capacity, and if you've never been into fitness, it's one of the easiest things you can start with. It's not just great for your body, it's also great for your mind. When you exercise in certain ways, you get a flood of dopamine and endorphins, which give you that feel-good factor. It de-stresses you, makes you happier, and it can even help you get creative ideas. Some of the videos we've done have been brainstormed while running. Especially if running is something you enjoy, there's no reason why you can't keep it up forever and add years to your life and life to those years, if done correctly. So these are the undeniable positives. And we too love going for a run every now and again. And we recommend it to anyone of any age and any fitness level. And if running is good for you, like most other exercises, well, surely more is better, no? Well, keep watching. Here are some things we are going to cover. One, the reason so many runners seem a little over the top happy. And what have they got in common with potheads? Two, avoiding common running injuries. And what we mean by training muscles versus straining muscles. Three, why cardio and running in general are not great for weight loss. And where it gets really interesting, the fatal problem of long endurance training, tracing all the way back to the marathon, as well as why runners tend to look older. Let's start with an interesting fact about potheads. When people get high smoking weed, how do they describe it? Maybe a sense of euphoria, as if stress melts away, and even a reduction in pain. And when people run a lot, they often describe what's known as runner's high. And what does that feel like? You get the sense of euphoria, as if stress just melts away, and even a reduction in pain. It turns out it's less to do with dopamine and endorphins than we used to think, and more to do with the endocannabinoid system producing that effect. Yeah, runners are essentially potheads. Anyway, it's not a bad thing. We just thought it may be interesting to bring it up. Next, let's talk about strain. We've got a lot of good things to say about running, but it can be problematic. And yet we still recommend you run. Let's break it down. Ever heard the phrase, train, don't strain? Well, regardless of the intensity, whether you jog slowly, run at a moderate pace, or even sprint, it's the same movement over and over again. You wouldn't dream of going to the gym and training your biceps every day, even if you alternated the intensities. You're likely to strain your biceps, which is exactly what happens if you do the same with running. Train, don't strain. That means find a balance and never overdo one thing. Three, why cardio and running in general are not great for weight loss? Well, running is a great way to start becoming more physically active and improving your aerobic and anaerobic capacities. It's not a great weight loss strategy on its own. Building a bit of aerobic capacity before belly proofing is a great idea. But if you think we went from this 
to this in just eight weeks with running alone? Well, we didn't. To lose fat, you have to break it first, a process we call lipolysis, which means extracting the fat from the cells into the blood. You then move it from the blood to oxidize in the mitochondria. Running can help you do both to some degree, if used strategically. For example, sprinting can be somewhat of a fat breaking exercise, while jogging can be great for fat burning. The biggest limitation comes from the fact that you're using the muscles over and over again. This creates fatigue, which limits what you can do. Not everyone feels fatigue, but it doesn't mean it's not there. That's why you'll always do better if you don't rely on the same movement, running at different intensities and speeds. We know some people will read into this, thinking they can do a bunch of random movements or train with weights to achieve perfect balance. Sorry guys, this is not what we are saying. And we go into the details of fat loss in the main series on our YouTube channel. The same is true for cardio, which refers to heart rate or the rate at which the cardiac muscle, the heart, pumps blood. Working with your heart rate can be really beneficial when you're trying to determine intensity. And you can also use it to break and burn fat to a degree too. But the heart, whilst a big muscle, is one muscle. And you've got many, 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 many more muscles in your body. This is why heart rate training, cardio like running, are not good weight loss solutions on their own. However, they can be useful as part of a wider strategy. And if you're one of the many people who have lost weight with running, ask yourself, was it quick to lose the weight? Was it? And did you get a repetitive strain injury? In terms of weight, how much of it was body fat? How much of it was glycogen? Water, muscle tissue wasting. This is common with long distance running. As well as creating heart damage. And in some cases, if starting from an extremely overweight position, you can also end up with excess skin. We are going to get to the most interesting part of this video, but before we do, let's take a moment to just recap on what we've covered so far. Running for weight loss. Running alone shouldn't be used for a weight loss strategy. However, it can be used as part of a wider strategy. You also want to make sure that you balance it from a movement perspective to avoid a repetitive strain injury by using the same muscles in the same way over and over again. Running is undeniably great both for mental and physical health, and you can live longer and as happy as a pothead if you know how to do it right. This brings us to a really interesting part most people wouldn't know about. In 490 BC, a Greek messenger called Pheidippides ran 26.2 miles from Marathon in Greece to Athens to inform the emperor of a victory against the Persians. Shortly after delivering his short message, he collapsed and died. This dude, Pheidippides, was probably one of the fittest guys in Athens, running miles every day to deliver his messages and to commemorate him, we now have the famous marathon, spanning 26.2 miles. In 1977, a physician called Thomas Bassler famously stated that if you can run a marathon, you're likely to be immune to a heart attack, starting a revolution with swarms of budding marathon runners following suit. And indeed, unlike Philippides, who collapsed and died shortly after delivering his message, cases of people dying in a marathon are thankfully quite low at 1 in 100,000. But what we can now say for sure is that running too many marathons will decrease your life expectancy. We are going to reference some really interesting work by cardiologist Dr. James O'Keefe, MD, who, along with other cardiologists, have now produced lots of interesting data about the heart health of long distance runners. If you want to dig into the details, we suggest you check him out. Here's what you should probably know. So, running in moderation is actually good for your heart. It increases cardiac output, which is how much blood your heart can pump at any one time. It also increases oxygen efficiency, cardiovascular capacity, aerobic and anaerobic capacities. It creates new blood vessels and capillaries, over time allowing you to do more in your fitness. And it helps you manage stress and mood, both of which have physiological effects. It's statistically true that those who run in moderation live a few years longer on average and with better health. However, while moderation has all those benefits, running to excess paints quite a different picture. 
Take blood for marathon runners a few hours after they cross the finish line and you will find alarming levels of troponin. A complex of three regulatory proteins commonly found in the bloodstream after a heart attack for up to one to two weeks, indicating injury to the heart. In small amounts, this is not really a problem because like any muscle, your heart will build back a bit stronger every time. But too much of this and you will face serious problems. Scan the hearts of long distance runners, especially those who have done it for years, and you will find alarming amounts of plaque in their arteries, and with blood vessels so calcified, some of them being harder than bones. It seems that while demanding more from the heart can help it adapt and improve, demanding too much isn't that great. It leads to consistent micro tears without giving your heart muscle a chance to recover. It creates inflammation, searing and scarring of the heart chambers and the blood vessels around it, and it also releases a ton of free radicals. Talking about free radicals, ever noticed how a lot of long distance runners look a little bit older than they should? Their skin loses elasticity and their muscles waste a little. All those free radicals can make ultra fit runners look like they've been smoking heavily for 20 plus years. Wait for me, I'm a heavy smoker. Now, we're not suggesting running is the new smoking. Don't get us wrong. While running in moderation is great, running in excess can give you heart and skin problems. Running too much ages you faster and no amount of antioxidants can help balance that out. The first place you tend to see it is on the skin. And here is the conclusion. Running is good for you and we encourage everyone to run. The key here is to run in moderation. What is moderation? Well, one or two hours a week divided into a few short sessions is perfect. 10 to 20 minutes every other day, or 40 minutes three times a week. This is all great, especially in addition to a balanced exercise routine with mobility and high intensity elements factored in. The problem starts when you overdo it on endurance. If you're one of these people addicted to running, often for an hour or longer at a time. The type who signs for a marathon once a year or more. This is risky territory and it can get you in serious trouble. Keep running in moderation, however, and you'll be happier, healthier, and fitter. As always, we hope you found this video interesting and if you did, give us a thumbs up and let us know what you thought in the comment section below. And until next time, stay baby!